In the last session, session number five, we started developing our API in AnyPoint platform. So that's what we did. The homework was, and I modified this last week because I realized that I was asking for too much. The homework was to create a new mule configuration files um, to add soft flows, to reference the soft flows, to finish creating the logic for the articles resource only for the happy path. So this is what changed on the last stream. I asked you to finish the whole implementation, but then I, when I was doing it, I noticed that it was way too much to ask from you if you're just getting started. So I changed this to just finish the logic for articles. And even that would be difficult if you don't know data weave, because you do need to transform some stuff. So don't worry if you didn't finish that, I will get to that. So that was the homework. And here you can see my whole solution. You can see the full list of changes in this pull request. I'm also going to start doing full requests. So you can see the whole things that I changed. I added images. I changed the RAML specification um, to include post and delete for categories. Yeah, for categories. Um, after you do that, you can simply re-scaffold the thing. All of the instructions are in the readme. So if you want to go through all of them, you can just go here and check out my step-by-step -step to see exactly everything that I did. And you can also check here all the changes that I did in the code. Um, this is the new RAML spec in the session five. Um, then on Studio Project, I changed the git ignore because there were some stuff that were bothering me. And in the POM, I ended up... Oh, I had to change the version. Um, it was version 100 for the API specification. And I had to change it to 102, which is a new version that I sent with this new change of the post and delete. So I modified the main one, which is Maxine's blog API, and I created these four um, just to have a different configuration file for each resource to have things better, I guess. You can separate this however you want, whatever makes more sense for you, so you can find the flows easier this way for me works because now if i need to modify something in the logic of articles i can just go here of, or if it's something in the logic of writers i can just go here and so on in our main file i added all of the flow references from here to the flows that i created in these four files so all of the things that are you that you're going to see here are just the flow references to the other place. So the root, the path, the URL, whatever is going to get here to the listener. The API key router is going to route it to the specific flow from these ones, depending on which ones we're calling. And then it's simply going to reference to one of the flows that I have in the other files. That is all that this file is doing now. This way, I do not have to modify this file at all now. So now, all of my logic is going to be, again, in one of these four files. So if I go to... Let me open one that doesn't have anything, like comments, for example. I simply took whatever was on the main file and put it here on the flows. And this is the just like all of the flows for each one of the operations and also notice the naming convention that i used here to name each one of the flows um i put first the name of the file like resources dash comments and then i added a colon and here i'm putting the name of the flow because this is way easier for me to find here i'm gonna show you why so if I go back to the main file and I click here on the flow reference here in the flow name, it's going to ask me for the flow. So if I didn't have this first part, the resources articles, then I would just see update one article. 
it would be harder to find in my opinion because i i know in which part it is but then if you check out this drop down it's huge right and it has like all of the flows from all of the project so here we have all of the flows from resources articles because I named them that way. Then we have resources categories, resources comments, and resources writers at the end. So that makes it way better for me to find the flows that I'm looking for. So even though I know in which file it is, when you need to reference to them, it's gonna ask for the name of the flow without the file. So that's why I'm putting here the name of the file. Make sure you have loggers like if when you are referencing to all of the flows and subflows and you're creating the stuff if you have nothing here like this you won't be able to run this application because this is wrong you cannot have a subflow empty or a flow or whatever you cannot have like a scope that is empty so i just added a logger to have something there so i will be able to run the mule application so make sure you do that so let's go to articles then this is what i ended up doing for the assignment i created first four subflows at the top that have common stuff that i'm basically calling from this same file over and over again because you remember we had for example the retrieve articles we had it on two different subflows no yes subflows so if we modified something from the first retrieve then we would have to modify it from the second retrieve as well and make sure that we remember to do that right you can never trust in your memory so that's why i'm just creating a subflow with the component so i can just call this subflow from wherever i need to reuse this component um, same naming convention, resources, articles, retrieve or articles in bars, for example. Yeah, this name, you can just put whatever is descriptive for you. So I'm doing the retrieve articles and the store articles in two different flows here. Um, and here I created two transformations that are also reused uh, in the rest of the file. So I also added them here. This is to get the article ID variable. So basically going to here in the code, attributes all your params dot article ID as number. Very important that we are making this as number because it, if you just get the URI parameter, even though we put number in the RAML, this is actually always going to be a string. So if you need to transform this URI param into date or Boolean or number, make sure to do that from somewhere in the logic because otherwise if you're going to need that later and you do need to be a number which was my case then you will need to do this um and then here i'm just filtering yeah filtering the payload by article id so um this is basically taking all of the payload so whatever the request is coming and then i'm just doing a filter so I'm taking whatever matches the ID to the URI parameter. So first of all, I'm getting, I'm retrieving all of the articles, right? With the retrieve um, component that we saw before. And then I'm just filtering them to match the ID that I sent in the request. That's basically what I'm doing. Um, at the end, there's a zero because that means it's getting the first item. And now we get to the logic part. So here, the read all articles, all of them have a logger for the start and a logger for the end, because that's going to make it easier for me to understand if there was an error, um, what flows happened, what flows didn't happen. Um, you can put loggers or not. It's your preference. I just prefer to do that to make sure that I, I can debug this later in the console, in the logs or somewhere um read all articles and this is going to the flow reference to retrieve articles you can right click on it and select go to reference flow 
um, to if you don't want to just scroll and find it you can just do that and it will take you to the flow so you can see what this is doing so it's retrieving all the articles then it's setting the payload to vars articles and that's all the mule event is immutable so every change to an instance of a mule event results in the creation of a new instance so this is basically what is happening what is getting transported from one component to the other the whole mule event is this box the outer box and inside the mule event we have on one side variables and on the other side the mule message and then inside the mule message we have the attributes and the payload so this is how this is working so if i go back to where i was retrieving the article id here we're doing attributes dot uri params dot article id as numbers so our attributes it's this one we are accessing the mule message and getting the attributes and then we have the payload so that is where we are setting all of the stuff for example where here the filter payload by um, article id so we are receiving first the payload which is the request that came and then we are filtering the payload so when i send the request to this application the payload is going to contain the json that i send in the request for example and the attributes could be article id for example the variables i'm going to create them inside uh, mule like this one this is a variable because if you see here let me zoom in here it says output and then it says variable article id this means that the variable named article id is being created you can modify this from this button and you will be able to see output variable variable name article id you can make this an attribute or you can make this the payload which is oops what we have here attributes payload or variables all right so that is how you read all the articles then to read one article it starts then it gets the article id variable then it retrieves all of the articles in the payload or no no i think it goes in yeah in the variable articles so we have now at this point a variable article id a variable articles and then we are filtering all of this stuff so here we have a transform message and we are saying get from the variables bars articles um in order default for now bars articles then filter and get all of the articles that match the id that i put there and that's how we are retrieving one article that's all then to create one article first we are getting the article id from the payload because when we create one article, we are not sending any ID, right? When we're creating an article, we have get and post, but we are not sending a URI parameter with the article ID, as we are doing with this one, when we have articles, article ID. So when we create an article, we have to get the ID from somewhere. In this case, we are getting it from payload.id. So get, we get the article ID from the payload, then we retrieve all of the articles, and then we append the new article to the articles. Then we store the new set of articles, and then we filter the payload by article ID to return that. So that's what we're doing in this case. Then to update one article, first we are retrieving the article ID, then we're retrieving the articles in both in the variables then we are updating the articles by article id we have the variable articles which contains all of the articles and then we're doing a map so we're going article by article kind of like a for each or a for and then we're saying if the id of this article that i'm checking right now matches the article id that i received from the attributes then return the payload if it doesn't match then just return the same article don't do nothing else so if it matches the id then it will put 
the request in that place instead of the article that was there. Then we're sorting the new articles array and then we're filtering again by article ID to return that at the end. Now, if you want to delete one article, again, we retrieve the article ID, we retrieve the articles, and then we are filtering by not article ID. We're getting the bars articles, so all of the articles, and then we're filtering by the ID that doesn't match the article ID from the variables. And this is where I had trouble with that data type that I was mentioning you, because since I was filtering the ID that doesn't match the variables article ID and the variables article ID was a string when the ID was a number, then nothing matched. So this was just not working. It was remember uh, removing anything, I think. So I needed to make the article ID variable a number. Otherwise, these just wouldn't work because the not equals is comparing the data types as well. Then we start the new articles and we finish. So let's go ahead and do the Postman collection so you can get that. So if you go to postman.com, you can download the stuff from here, whatever matches your operating system. And here you are. You can create a collection from this side you can change the theme as you can see i have it on the night team dark team and you can also create an account for free but you don't have to you can just use this as is without an account but whatever makes you happy so i'm gonna create a collection and i'm also gonna add this collection to the repo so you can use it if you want if you don't want to create it from scratch you can just click here on import and you can either put the file, put the folder, the link, the raw text, code repository, and so on. So you can import it from there as well. So I have my collection, which is basically a folder. Then I will add a new request. So we have first articles get. For now, I'm going to leave localhost. We can change this later. We were using localhost 8082 slash articles. And this is a get. So we're going to leave it like that. Oops. And right now I'm not running it. But if you click on send, you will be able to send a request and receive a response here. Um, I am using this two side panel because I work better with that. If you click on view, you will be able to change this toggle to pane view like this or like this if you want to see the request on the top and the response on the bottom whatever works best for you i prefer to use a request on the left and the response on the right um let's put get just get articles you can also name this more descriptive if you prefer like get all the articles or stuff like that all right so we have this and then the other thing that i wanted to show you is that this we are going to be changing this url right because right now we are running in local localhost 8082 but eventually we will deploy this whole application into cloud hub and we will have to change this url to the cloud hub environment so for that you can go here in environments and you can create a new environment so one is going to be local and here on variable let's name this host and this is going to be localhost 8082, which is what we are using right now. Now this is dev, host, and this host will eventually change to be something about Cloud Hub. Cloud Hub. Current value. Okay, Cloud Hub. We don't have this URL yet because we haven't deployed to Cloud Hub, but we will have it at some point and we can just put it put it here in the current value all right so now to reference that we go here and where we had localhost 8082 we're going to remove that and add double curly brackets and inside here we're going to write host so now we have this host slash articles and here on the top we can change the environment so right now it says no environment but if we click on it since we already saved the oops 
the dev and local environments we can just select in which one we are for example if i select local now this is saying that let me zoom in now this is saying that i am running in localhost 8082 so i can keep all of the stuff for articles right here and all of the other resources are going to be in their own dedicated folder this way i can just come here and run all of these folders and collections to don't have to do this every time that i need to run it you can again just change the environment here from dev to local and it's the same the same um request and response so let's do all of the articles one so you can get that out and then you can replicate the same for all of the others duplicate okay so now this is gonna be post articles we change this to post and then this is our body so to send this body we can select here um body raw json and now this is the body that i'm gonna send um, duplicate so articles and then id let's say one for example and let's send change this to articles id well article id okay we don't have a body here so this is done so let's duplicate this this is gonna be now put and the body is this json change the name to put articles article id all right save so let me duplicate this and this is gonna be delete delete articles article id and there's no body so that's all save in the future i'm gonna show you how to create tests for your stuff if you want to create regression testing or stuff like that it's super fun i love to do that but for now we are good um, and also for the the rest of the resources that you're going to do on homework here if you click on params you will be able to add query params because i remember that we had some requests that had query parameters so here you can add them just add the key query param and the value hello and that's it you're gonna be able to send that you also have authentication in our case we don't have any authentication there are headers um and prerequisites and tests are to run javascript scripts <laughs> to prerequisites are basically going to run before you run the request and the tests are going to run after you run the request to make sure that everything is correct but we're not going to do that now so you're just going to need to use the params tab for the query parameters or the body for the body as we saw here for example in the put or in the post so let's say that i want to check what happens when i when i read one article so i'm gonna put here right click on this part and click on add breakpoint here this will add this tiny red spot also ignore all of those problems the application runs fine sometimes data wave sends this stuff it's annoying but it, it goes away sometimes sometimes not <laughs> um so i have this red spot right here and i'm gonna run this and when it gets here it's gonna stop so i can go and check this out one by one so now right click on the canvas and click on debug project and then eventually it's gonna ask me if i want to change perspectives um basically to show you the debugging window or to see the console or stuff like that so you can have a better view of whatever is happening in your application there it is 
This mule debug perspective is designed to support applications debugging. Blah, blah, blah. Do you want to... Oh, it's not showing the other thing. <laughs> Do you want to open this perspective now? You can also click here on remember my decision if you wanted to do it automatically for you. In my case, I don't like when it does it automatically for me, so I just keep clicking here yes or no every time that it opens. In this case, I'm going to select yes. And the perspective has changed. Let me make this smaller. Um, you can see here the console still, so this is still running. Oh, it's done. It's deployed. Um, here you will be able to see the canvas. Um, here you have some stuff like evaluate expression or the mule breakpoints or the mule palette if you want to continue developing. Um, and you can also change the perspectives from up here. Let me see if I can show you. There. So right here we are in the debug perspective, which is this one. If you want to go back to the other perspective that we have, it's this one, which is mule design. And here you have API design as well. So we wanted to read one article. I have this log, uh, this breakpoint here. If I go to Postman, I will open the get articles article ID and I'm going to search for article one. This is the implementation, so this is going to work. Oh, I'm missing API. Oh, forgot about that. So I'm going to add it here to, oops, to the environment because I don't want to modify it in every single one so localhost 82 slash api slash api well i think i can just modify the current value whatever it's fine save okay so now this is gonna work if i do articles okay it worked so right now if i get all of the articles i have one with the id two can I zoom in more? Yeah. And actually, I'm going to change my view so you can see this better. So my response is I have one article with the ID 2 and one article with the ID 1. I was doing some testing, ID 3. So yeah, I have some IDs that are repeated because we don't have yet the functionality to stop this from happening. Don't worry about that. So we have the IDs and then and then I'm gonna get just one article because I run this and I was I did not have any breakpoints here. It was not able to stop there. But in this case, this is where I do have the breakpoints. So if I do articles one and send, you notice this is not gonna stop running because it stopped right here. So right now it's on the first logger. And I can come here and see my mule message, actually. Remember, we had the mule message with attributes, payload, and variables. Well, here you can see attributes, payload, and variables. So you can open the attributes. And then you can see headers. And you can see the URI parameters here. If you open URI parameters, you will see that we have the first one, which is article, article ID and the value is one because we are sending number one now we have here the payload if we check the payload we don't have anything it's empty because this is a get and in variables we have supposedly one there album headers that's fine we don't need that so here on the top right you have the navigation keys to go through whatever you are developing so for example if i click here this is going to move just one space did i click it ah there so you saw it moved from the start of the logger to the flow reference article id and if i click on it again it's going to go inside the flow reference now so now it's here on the article ID and it's going to create the article ID variable. And if I click on it again, it's going to come out there and go back to the flow. So now if I check here the variables, now I have article ID equals one. Okay, so we can also see, I think it moved on its own, but okay. 
it went to retrieve articles and that now it's going to the retrieve all of the articles, which is going to create another variable. If I click on next, did I click on it? I think it's slowing a little bit because I'm on the live stream. Okay. Yes, it moved again. Okay. And now we have article ID one and then articles. And this has all of the articles. If you want to see a bigger version of what I'm clicking, you can make this smaller and you can move this here. So here you have all of the payload that we can we are seeing and this is better than this right so you can also see here what is the payload and this is exactly what i got back from the other call where we got all of the articles so after that what i did was use the filter remember i showed you this code it's filtering from all of the articles it's filtering the ones that match the id only so now if I check the payload again, this only contains one article which matches the ID one. So we can click continue and this is now done. And now I have my response. So if I do the same, but change this to three, remember that I had several articles with the number three and I can send this again. And it's again gonna come here and do the whole thing. Let's stop there. So now we have variables, article ID three, and the articles, we have again, all of the list of articles that we had before. And then it's gonna do the filtering thing right here. It, you can see the square that it stopped there. So if I click on, wait, here's a payload. So you can see it's empty. Once I click on it, it's gonna do the filtering and it assigned whatever got back there. Now you might be wondering why is this, why is there just one if there were three different articles, right? Because for my use case, I'm assuming that there is just going to be one article with the same ID. Because I haven't created the logic to prevent that from happening, I ended up with three. But remember that I told you here that in the code, I added this zero at the end. This means that it's getting just the first one from what it got so let me do a test here if i get all of this code and here we have the evaluate expression evaluate data with expression i can put this code here and click on evaluate what oh let me copy the whole thing hold on evaluate there so now it's super small for you. I'm so sorry about that. But here you can see that it's returning the whole thing. Oh, wait, sorry. I forgot to take out the zero. So I have the zero here and I'm just going to remove it. Oops. There. So now we have filter ID equals parse article ID. So let's click on evaluate again. And now <laughs> we can see that we have an array of objects. So we have the first article here with ID three and we scroll down and we have the second article with ID three and now the third article with ID three. So I'm going to show you data weave in future stuff, but I think you need to understand this for the rest of the stuff that we uh sorry datawave.mulesoft.com playground so i'm just gonna show you this real quick so you can see what is happening so here we are assuming that this is a payload that has the three articles right one two three okay so now This is the payload. I can copy this whole thing to show you what is happening. Oh, actually, no, just the filter. Yes. Payload filter ID equals. We don't have a variable here, so I'm just going to put three. 
and I think this is super slow why is this super slow let me try that again No, oh, no, I got the same. Well, I don't know why this is not working right now, but anyway, sometimes when I'm streaming, I have a lot of issues because of all the bandwidth that I'm getting. But anyway, here you can evaluate different expressions so you can see what is happening in your code if you want to see step by step. And finally, just click on next. And we end up just with one because we are extracting the index zero from these from the array that we had. I can also run two and it's also going to work because we also had IDs with two. And actually, I'm just going to send it. And then here you can just click here on this resume button and it will just go ahead and continue without you having to go step by step. And that's it we got the id number two what happens if i send an id that does not exist let me again click on next i receive a null and that is because once i do here the filter i am setting up first the default default and then square brackets that means if there is no articles, then make this default to an empty array. In this case, there are articles, but then after we do the filter, it ends up being just an empty array because there is no article that matches the ID number four. So first we have the empty array, but then when I do the square bracket zero, then I will receive the null. So we can actually fix that. If I put here on the code after the zero, because I'm getting a null, I can use another default here and just put an empty object, for example. Save this and this is going to start running again. So now instead of receiving the null, I'm going to receive the curly brackets. This is just the, some examples so you can kind of understand how DataWeave works and what are you doing in DataWeave. Um, but I am now making, I am not now seeing that I'm not going to have time to do the rest of the implementation. So I hope this works for you. We can just continue the implementation on the next session as well. All right, it started so we can run this again send and continue and now we receive the empty brackets it's just taking me so much longer than i was expecting because it's just so much content that i want to cover so yeah we're gonna do that but this is a great experiment for me to see what content you all need out there so i can just create this content clean and upload it and show it to you really step by step in a better version like three minutes five minutes stuff like that all right so thank you so much for joining the session i will see you then next week um july 26 for session seven to show you the finished implementation and to show you how to deploy the api to cloud hub I also think that I should have done a way easier API, like a to-do or something like that, but oh well. It will be for the next content I create, I guess. Thank you all for experimenting this thing with me and please feel free to show me whatever feedback you have for me. I am happy to help you. All right, I'll see you next week then. Create those Postman collections. Bye. I ended up, yeah, bye. <laughs>